many thanks for the invitation and uh, to share the discussion with Professor Cunningham. The decision, decision to operate uh, depends on uh, the patient, the disease, and I'm going to say a few words on how the surgeon can tip the balance, whether to operate or not to operate. In terms of the patient, a severe comorbidity uh, is a clear decision. There are some people in home oxygen, is really a very clear decision not to operate. But the key group really is people with marginal fitness, people who is not well, have a, a lot of comorbidity, they don't well mobilize it, what to do for them. So before deciding on those patients, um, give you an example, we have a, a, a personalized multimodality treatment. It's called a prepare program. And in this program, uh, we, the physical activity and the respiratory rehab, uh, the PNR, is done not by physiotherapy. They are done by a personal trainer. So a personal trainer will see the patient and will design a program for the patient. And then see a nutritionist, see a, psycho uh, um, a psychologist, and stop smoking. And we have done recently a study and shown that 12% of patients at an, in the UK who had oesophagectomy either admitted to hospital or require new treatment for psychological uh, comorbidity after surgery. So psychological problem is not only affecting the quality of life, but they require uh, medical treatment. And just this just shows you the data when we apply the program. So the complication over three years reduced by applying a preoperative uh, 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 rehabilitation program. So for the people initially we thought may not be fit to give them about a couple of months in the program and they do very well after surgery and the complication reduced. In terms of age, we don't take age as, um, as an absolute value. So it doesn't really, whether people are 75 or 80, what makes a difference is how patient is ready for surgery or not. So everybody who are above 75, they see an oncogeriatrician who does a rehab program, they see the personal trainer, and the data will be always old people has a lower survival and overall survival than younger people, but the data is reasonably uh, okay. In the next few slides, I'm just going to speak about the disease now. For metastatic disease with synchronous metastasis, there is no role for palliative uh, oesophagectomy. The days uh, to do the operation just to palliate the patient is not really a, a, a current or standard practice. There are cases which resect uh, oligometastatic disease either at the time or after, but those really not the norm. But the norm, there is no role for palliative oesophagectomy. And this is for distant organs, liver and lung and bone, People with peritoneal disease, they do very badly. And people who really, with adenocarcinoma, with cervical or paraortic lymph node. This group of people is they don't do well with surgery. And surgery, we, I think, we should not be done. But there are other group of patients which really, and I'll show you some data considered for surgery, is the people with a celiac lymph node, and they have lymph nodes along their superior mediastinum along the upper, um, uh, along the right and left recurrent laryngeal nerve. So those group of people will be eligible for surgery and show some data. The second group which we shouldn't operate on, people with a T4B disease, with a tumor going into the airways or t to the aorta or invading the recurrent nerve. Because if they invade the recurrent nerve, the possibility to be invading or very, there is no plane to the trachea and the bronchus is very high. So this group of people don't really fit the surgical group because really there's no point, no advantage uh, to do an operation and leave tumor behind. However, the 
tumor invading the pleura and the diaphragm, this is part of the normal routine resection. So at the normal oesophagectomy, we take a rim of the diaphragm and we take the pleura on the right and left side. So this is a, a patient, a resectable disease, and I'll show you some data for that. The pericardium and the lung is very difficult to predict them before the operation. If it's attached to the pericardium, we take part of the pericardium, part of the lung, and we get R0 resection, and the majority of cases tend to be really not invading, but just atterrant after chemo or chemo radiotherapy. But it's still a resectable disease. So for a metastatic and locally advanced in resectable disease, there is no survival advantage for surgery, and surgery compromises the quality of life. I think at least a year or two years, the patient to go back to a reasonable quality of life. So there's no point to do an operation, and we know that the patient will compromise quality of life for no survival advantage. There are superior options, the stent for dysphagia and the pain management, and still there's a, 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 a role for sometimes palliative a radiotherapy or palliative chemotherapy. Early disease, we shouldn't really operate on this. I don't think even there is a need for trial for that. It's very, very good data, does need trial. There is low incidence, it's less than 3% involved of lymph nodes. We can achieve, or the endoscopies can achieve complete resection. Uh, there is no long-term post oesophagectomy symptoms, uh, uh, post vagotomy diarrhea, steatorrhea, and dumping, and all these, and we preserve the quality of life. So for a T1 disease, really, there is no, I don't think there is much role of surgery if complete resection is achieved. The upper oesophageal is squamous cell carcinoma. All the data, even from uh, uh, the Far East and Japan showed that there's superior outcome of radical chemo radiotherapy compared to surgery. For a, um, a squamous cell carcinoma in the superior mediastinum or in the neck, uh, I think definitive chemo radiotherapy is the is, uh, best option for them. However, there is a role for salvage of vajectum in selected patient for a small residual disease in the upper mediastinum. Now, the surgical strategy can tip the balance. So I'm not saying the surgical skills because the majority of people have similar skills, but the surgical strategy, how to approach the disease makes a difference. So a surgeon can tip the balance. I don't think there is a, a, a place a, from personal perspective or looking at the a, literature for an incomplete resection. The time for people to do an operation and leave tumor behind under the margin or lymph nodes just these days has gone. So really, the surgical strategy will tip the balance whether to operate if there is a potential cure or not to operate if we, if we are going to leave tumor behind. And I'll, tell, I'll show you some data for that. Just before, before going to sp specific points, Looking at all randomized trials, which landmark trials, so we got all the trials, 33 trials, with more than 7,000 patients, and we looked at whether the surgical technique will reduce the variation in lymph node harvest, in hospital mortality, and local regenerative recurrence. And the outcome of this meta-analysis systematic review showed that the results of the trial will depend on how are the surgeon performance before enrolling the trial, the surgical technique used, and monitoring the performance of the trial. So a lot of the trial results will be overweighed and overshadowed by the surgical technique used in the trial. Now, this is uh, an unpublished data. There's a data from, uh, we recently uh, compared uh, chemo, neoadjuvant chemotherapy to neoadjuvant chemoradiotherapy and cohort studies who compared data from three centers with the cross uh, patients. So I'll share with you some data. This is a COSM analysis, which really is, um, we look at the changing point, at which point the change will make a difference. 
So if we look at the recurrence after neoadjuvant chemotherapy, we'll find the change when after 52 lymph nodes. And so the recurrence will drop from 47 to 16 percent with the change if, uh, in lymph node count, which means that the surgical performance after neoadjuvant chemotherapy will make a difference in the outcome of surgery. If we're looking at disease-free survival, will be the same. The disease-free survival will increase from 22 to 33 months with the different in surgical strategy. When we looked at the new adjuvant chemoradiotherapy, there was no change point. But the number of lymph nodes was, does not allow this really change. The number of, average number of lymph nodes was low. But there are two other studies which showed as well there is not much a change of surg surgical strategy does not change the outcome after neoadjuvant uh, chemoradiotherapy. Now, coming to the selected group which I spoke about, the lymphadenectomy in the superior mediastinum. Patient who had lower and middle squamous cell cancer and patient who had adenocarcinoma in the mid-esophagus has about 35% involvement of lymph nodes in the superior mediastinum along the recurrent laryngeal nerve. So patient with squamous cell cancer, if we don't clear the lymph nodes along the superior mediastinum, potentially can leave one third of those patients with lymph nodes. The other thing is, it's very obvious if we see patient lymph nodes along the superior mediastinum, we need to take them out. This is no brainer. And the other group of patients which I'm going to see is the N3 disease. Do we really operate on them? And if we operate on them, what would be the outcome? Lymph node size cannot be the base of the extent of surgery. You can't look at the lymph nodes in the CT scan and make a decision with how to do the operation. This is slide showed you um, the lymph nodes, and we, this slide looks at the size in one axis and the cumulative percentage in the other axis. So 40% of positive lymph nodes are five or less millimeter. So really, and those you can't see in the CT scan. So the decision to tailor the operation based on the CT scan or the PET scan is very difficult to work because 40% of the lymph nodes will be beyond, below five millimeter, which is really the resolution of the scan. This is the N3 data. And, and I was a bit surprised when I looked at our data a, a, a couple of weeks ago because um, any zero disease, they got a good survival. Any one disease have a reasonable survival. Any two, 30%, five years survival. And any three, 13%, five years. But when I look, we looked at the three year survival is 24%. And this is after chemotherapy. So it's still 24% as a three year survival is a reasonable number, but it's, of course is not, um, is not is not something we should aim for, we should aim better than that. Last couple of slides, I'm going to speak the, about circumferential margin. So the circumferential margin can be an indication of the operative technique, but can be the indication of the, how biologically the disease, how aggressive the disease. So this is a study from the uh, Christopher Marriott in the French group, which showed that uh, the R1 disease really indicates more or less tumor biology. It's not only an operation, because you have the tumor, the same lymph node count, the same old techniques, but they do worse with, uh, with R1. And when we looked at the data in our institution, we have, we, 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 it's the same, people who have a positive circumferential margin have a lower survival, but this one, it shows 40% difference between the two groups. 
So this is the last slide. Just to summarize, which is not uh, much different from Professor Cunningham, that who would be the patient which should not be operated on? And really the question we're giving, we should not to. So the patient who have a critical comorbidity, which you cannot optimize, which you cannot make them better. In terms of the disease, the ME disease, T4B disease, T1A, because endoscopic mucosa resection, and the squamous cell cancer in the superior mediastinum. In the middle and lower, we do neoadjuvant, chemorad, and followed by surgery. In terms of surgical strategy, this can tip the balance, but the key message, if the surgeon can't achieve local and log original control and clearance, there is no really point to do the surgery. Specifically, in patient with the superior mediastinum and along the celiac axis. Thank you.